GTA Online has survived for seven years by adding free content to its world. Filling it with hordes of shiny, attractive, futuristic knickknacks and world-ending superhero-like missions comparable to what happened to the Fast and Furious franchise. Well, that is just about enough apocalypse excitement for me. You used to save up to buy a lowrider? Well, now you can save up to buy a car that flies, submerges underwater, or transforms into a walking robot. Okay, the last one isn't real, but it's not far off from where we're headed. One look at their release history shows what effect shark cards are having on Rockstar Games. You'll hear the argument about how it takes a long time to create their games, but it can be easily disproved with a shred of research on the games they have made and the time that they have taken to make them. What's happening right now is the opposite of progress and innovation. This is just greedy milking and it shouldn't be encouraged by Rockstar fans. If you think that this is just one guy's opinion and that that makes me wrong, this video isn't just my opinion. This video was created from a massive collection of hundreds of opinions. Opinions from my subscribers and viewers. This video not only features my audience's opinions, but the opinions of Derek, Zumi Fiasco, Swegta, Lucas, Badger Goodger, and Combat Wombat. The purpose of this video is to show you just how broken shark cards are. To show you what type of environment they've created, both in the game and in the real world. Shark cards can be seen as far back as GTA 4, and were even possibly associated with Shark Loans, a company seen advertised in San Andreas. Shark is a credit card company under the Bossack Stock Exchange in GTA 4 and GTA 5. A company slogan can be seen in-game on the Bossack.com website that reads, A shiny card that offers lifetime membership to the Debt Slavery Club. Shark is clearly referring to loan sharks, people who threaten borrowers into paying back loans in a timely fashion. But what are shark cards to us, living in the real world? They are microtransactions that allow you to trade real currency into in-game currency. Originally, GTA Online launched in September 2013 with only the Red Shark, Tiger Shark, Bull Shark, and Great White Shark cards. Later, in December 2013, the Whale Shark card was added. Then, in March 2014, the Megalodon Shark card was added. These prices have been in place since their inception. Who are the people responsible for buying shark cards? You'd think they wouldn't exist, but they do. In fact, Rockstar made more than half a billion in digital sales, which were highly due to in-game microtransactions. The incentive to buy your way to the top is pretty clear, as the game is a highly grindy mess. No one wants to waste ridiculous chunks of time only to be rewarded with insulting payouts. Here's a poll I posted in my community tab in preparation for this video. 34% of the 5,600 people asked said that they have purchased a shark card. Let's be generous and say that the average amount spent was $5 on the Tiger Shark card. This means that out of 5,600 people that watch my videos, Rockstar likely made at least $9,520. To repent for your sins, you might want to go to our patron and pay $3 for a month. I'm just saying. If I were to try to guess, I would say that the ones buying shark cards are most likely people facing frustrating paywalls, tedious grinding with a lack of time to play, or first-time players. But mostly kids. Before we mention the awful truth about shark cards, we have to appease the shark card defenders. We must give credit where credit is due, and first, acknowledge the good that comes from them. The most obvious benefit is that we get free DLC. 
We haven't had to pay a dime extra, yet we've been given new heists, cars, clothes, and many hours of entertainment. It's true that Rockstar is stuck between a rock and a hard place here, because no one would be happy if they charged for each update, yet no one is happy about having shark cards either, due to the grindy nature that comes with them. The community is also more active thanks to regular updates and attention, prolonging the game's lifespan, which could be considered a good thing, but also has a negative side. Shark cards also potentially help new players catch up, so to speak, so that they can afford many of the extremely expensive items. Who is Take-Two? Know that when we see these monetization schemes in GTA, it's most likely due to Take-Two Interactive. How can we be so sure? Take-Two is not only the parent company of Rockstar Games, but also a few others, including 2K Games, the company that makes the NBA 2K games. In the same way, eSports games are just repackaged garbage created solely to resell you the same product over and over again with updated rosters, slight improvements, even some downgrades disguised as a new game, only to sell you packs or digital items. NBA 2K isn't much different. There was a huge debate over NBA 2K and their gambling-like gameplay that led to putting the ESRB's rating system in question. The Angry Joe Show voiced these issues and most everyone agreed that the ESRB needs to hold games like this accountable and inform parents about loot boxes or card packs, as it's basically gambling with real money to get a random set of items that you may or may not have wanted, causing children to spend more to get what they want and to get the thrill of opening random packs. Groomed for gambling! These kids don't realize that they are spending real money that is hard to come by for many parents. Companies like EA and Take-Two prey on children and their parents, exploiting their weaknesses and their naivety. League packs, shark cards, loot boxes, whatever you want to name them, they all masquerade as something fun and innocent, yet in reality, they're very damaging. The existence of shark cards come with many downsides, and one of the biggest has a major effect on Rockstar fans, that being the fact that Rockstar's game release schedule has plummeted in quantity. Back in the good old days, we used to get several games every few years, and now? Well, now we get nothing. Nothing but a few missions and vehicles. You know, Rockstar used to pioneer in innovation and creativity. Now, that has all practically ceased, thanks to shark cards. Many heads at Rockstar have parted ways and people are concerned that this is because of decisions being made by Take-Two to focus primarily on shark card sales. By now we could have had Bully 2, GTA 6, Midnight Club 5 Dub Edition Remix, or Table Tennis 2. But instead, we get the 7 year old map with new vehicles and missions. whoop de doo Thanks Rockstar! Very cool. Rockstar Games being the company that made the most money on any media title in the world is the leader when it comes to gaming. So it's foolish to believe that companies like EA and Activision are not taking notes. They are. Does anyone remember how Take-Two went after the creator of Open 4? Starting a lawsuit demanding that he abandon the Open 4 project, and how it led to huge community backlash and review bombing on Steam, ultimately leading to Rockstar swaying Take-Two into stopping, or when the 5M mod creator posted to Twitter, I just got a pair of private investigators at my door claiming to be sent by Take-Two. Then the investigators handed him a phone, with a Take-Two employee on the other end, telling the modder to discuss how to cease his activities with regard to Grand Theft Auto. These are real-world effects that have come because of shark cards. The risk of any potential loss of microtransaction sales caused this company to send private investigators, start up lawsuits, and bully their way into taking advantage of you. Back in the years of 2013 and 2014, shark cards had some bang for their buck. You could actually buy many things for $100, but here's the thing, as time went on, the value of shark cards stayed and the value of newer items in-game skyrocketed. This means the market has become saturated with extremely expensive items which lower the value of the card. In 2020, $100 can only buy you two or three newer vehicles. I think it goes without saying, but shark cards are now overpriced and outdated. You could argue that this is a good thing, that this means less people will be inclined to purchase the cards and pay to win, but this also means that you'd have to work harder and longer to earn and afford the higher priced items as well, which would evenly push you back to considering shark cards as an option. You can make about 5 million an hour using glitches or exploits in-game. 
That's $70 in shark cards, though you run the risk of getting banned or reset in doing so. You can make about 1 to 1.5 million an hour grinding the casino heist repeatedly, which is about $24 in shark cards. Modders frequently drop money onto you as well, or give you glitched money cards, which allow you to make tons of money. Mods are also free and cheap, which allow you to get whatever you want for a quarter of the price of a shark card. This makes the shark cards basically worthless, as the game is so broken and poorly managed, why would you invest your hard-earned money into a broken game, a broken currency? Rockstar's mismanagement of their game makes shark cards even less valuable than simply having overly expensive items. The reason they don't offer a price tag for each item is because they don't want you to see the price they have literally valued their items at. To expose the greedy rates they price things at, we're going to show you how much money many of the popular vehicles cost. Some of these vehicles require special facilities to store them, so you'll see they are included in the breakdown. Imagine spending $100 on an airplane. You got the entire campaign, the entire map, and all the cars for $60 on release. Now, for near double that, you get an airplane to fly around in. Everybody knows at this point that the game is very grindy. Many people defend the grindy nature by saying that people should just learn how to grind or stop complaining. So the very nature of this argument is bound to stir up disagreement. Something we should all be able to agree on is that while some people enjoy grindy games, others do not. And no matter how many ways you can try to explain different strategies to learn, to make money the fastest or the most efficiently, the idea of working so much for a few items is always going to be off-putting to many players. Couple that with frustrating requirements to fill four-player lobbies, AI having aimbot precision accuracy, long time padding drives that exist simply to waste time, and you have a grade A grinding formula. To many players, this gameplay loop is unfun. This gameplay was fabricated for the sole purpose of being just doable enough so that people with the time and patience could earn money, and just irritating enough to encourage shark card purchases. They created a fine line where most casual players unfortunately fall into frustration and either quit or purchase shark cards. Not everyone has the time or patience to grind. I've seen almost every argument possible at this point. Most of them are missing the point entirely. For example, if you're one of the people who say the game is fine, just glitch, you're failing to see the big picture. Since Rockstar doesn't intend for glitches, they could not be included in your argument for the game's stability and health. They don't want you glitching, so it's not income that you can use to defend the game state. If anything, it further proves just how broken the game is. It's basically like saying, I don't understand why people say Lamborghinis are so expensive, I could walk into a dealership with a gun and drive off the lot with one in five minutes. People these days are too lazy and naive, expecting everything to be given to them on a silver platter. I leave my game running round the clock and simply check on it when I have the time to spare. Fact is, if a player is determined enough and has the patience to learn how to play the game properly, then they can make some serious profits without ever having to buy a shark card. People that say these kinds of things don't account for other people's lives. It's doubtful that they are simply lazy, but more accurately put is that they're just busy with their lives. They likely don't want things handed over on a silver platter, but achievable enough to have a life and play the game on the side, not full time. As this guy keeps the game running 24-7 to exploit the game's business features. To say that you play the game properly is incorrect as you're avoiding AFK kicking and exploiting the game, something Rockstar likely doesn't want, which means that my previous point stands here as well. When your two options are to grind your booty cheeks for hours on end, or give Rockstar more money, either way, it's a lose-lose situation. That's why people mod. 
The game is designed to waste your time and frustrate you. The entire Rockstar business model is set up to encourage you to buy shark cards. And you can't forget that they reset thousands of players, which only encourages them to mod. Cause they've got nothing to lose at that point. Why have such a poor mod detection system? It further devalues shark cards. Because why would you spend real money on things other people are cheating to easily get? You may as well join them. This is not a debate. Any game that lets you purchase anything other than cosmetics in the game with real money is a pay-to-win game. Because you can buy your way to the top without working at all. Consider this. Fortnite offers cosmetic-only items, and they are very financially successful. Fortnite is also a free game. On the contrary, GTA Online is a paid game that charges you to get items that literally give you an advantage over other players. They are at directly opposite ends of the spectrum. As strange as it is, Fortnite is in the right here. GTA Online behaves more like a free-to-play mobile game. Constant pop-ups, calls, text, emails, loading screen ads, and pause menu ads shoved in your face constantly. It's aggressive and it's spam. You can't even get through the long loading screen without sitting through a shark card promotion. This in-your-face style of advertising tactic is inappropriate, especially for console users, as they already paid for the game, a console subscription service so that they can play the game, and yet they are still being pushed to buy shark cards. This only gets more inappropriate when you realize the demographic they are clearly targeting. Honestly, I'm surprised that Rockstar hasn't faced a huge backlash for this move. They made their rated M game free on the Epic Games launcher for two weeks. And as you know, the Epic Games launcher is the home of Fortnite. So they obviously did this in order to target their younger audiences for shark card sales. This is by far the most blatant and obvious child exploitive business practice I've ever seen Rockstar Games engage in. And at this point, there's no moral line they're not willing to cross in order to push their shark card sales. They most definitely know the demographic they're aiming for. This is why the missions in GTA Online are becoming increasingly ridiculous. The vehicles are more and more science fiction because this is just what a lot of kids enjoy. That's not to say that adults can't enjoy these features and vehicles, but it is to say that children find these types of updates more interesting than that of a typical realistic grounded GTA update. push the likelihood of frustration and payout losses, they encourage players to grief each other in-game. They are more interested in statistically increasing the rate of payout losses at the expense of their player base in order to encourage shark card sales. Rather than keeping the game enjoyable for their fans, they treat us like idiots and hold out their hand for money. Well, Rockstar, you can clap these booty cheeks, cause you're not getting a cent from me, bitch. I find it interesting that you have to pay bills in-game on an in-game daily basis. They extort small amounts of cash here and there, which add up over time. One commenter said he had to pay 50k every in-game day on bills. Rockstar comes up with any excuse to drain your savings dry. An in-game day is 48 minutes, so if you play the game for about 5.5 hours spending 50k a day on bills, you'd spend $350,000. That's $8.75 in the real world, just to idly play a game for five and a half hours. In the big picture, this adds up. They know it, and that's why they do it. Bills in a video game. Bills in a video game about robbery. Ironic, don't you think? What is a paywall? A paywall is a barrier between you and the thing you want. Let's say you wanted a MK2 for whatever reason. After you buy it, you expect that you can customize its looks, right? Unfortunately, you'd be wrong. You need a terabyte to customize it. Okay, okay, so just buy a terabyte then, right? Well, again, you'll need a nightclub first to store it. That is $5,129,500 in hidden fees to customize a vehicle you bought. This deplorable practice right here is all over in Grand Theft Auto Online. Why? To promote impulse shark card purchases.
This is a post on Newswire back when GTA Online was first starting out. This is their official statement in response to concerns regarding shark cards. To allay some concerns we've heard on this subject, we can assure you that the game is designed such that the option of purchasable GTA cash should not disrupt the playing field. And there are a few mechanics in place to help ensure that all players will still have to rank up with reputation points in order to get access to purchase high-end items. You will have to earn your stripes and level up to unlock Aspirational items. Aspirational. False. If you look at what many would say is the most overpowered vehicle, the Mark II, new players can purchase it right out of the gate, as long as they have enough money. Fun gameplay experience, rather than ever being a grind. False. The game is obviously very grindy, and everything is overpriced. But we really need your help in figuring out what those issues are, so please work with us on that. They clearly don't have any interest in listening to our feedback, as my last video that focused entirely on the issues of GTA Online had 123,000 likes, where thousands of players agreed on the issues and nothing has changed nine months later. Well, I take that back. They did reset thousands of players because the shark cards were at risk. They did what every typical company does. They said a lot without really saying much at all. And years down the line, it can all be disproven. Their primary focus is on any glitch or exploit that endangers their cash cow. They put that above game-breaking glitches, like the recent God Mode glitch, opting to focus on resetting players abusing the apartment glitch, rather than fixing more important issues. Rockstar treats shark cards like a joke in the universe. You should too. Rockstar has become the very thing they used to make fun of. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. If you buy these digital extortion cards, you are playing right into their hand. You are telling them that their bad behavior is acceptable. And believe me, they are testing you, pushing the limits, and every other company on Earth is watching. When you buy a shark card, you are bypassing the game itself, defeating the entire purpose of the game. Unless the purpose of the game is to sell you shark cards, then you're playing the game just right. Did you know if you have ever bought a shark card and you live in the United States, you're being ripped off? Literally. If you purchase a Megalodon shark card in Canada, you'd spend 100 Canadian dollars. You would then receive $8 million in-game cash. 100 CAD is equivalent to 75 USD. If you live in Canada, you're getting a $25 USD discount on that Megalodon shark card every single time you purchase it. Why conform to society and pay for money in a game all about rejecting the system and stealing your way to the top? Why buy cars in a game called Grand Theft Auto? That's like playing soccer in a game called Dolphin Titty Roulette. It makes no sense. But are shark cards really so bad? Is it really so black and white? Yes, it is. They are bad in 2020, and we need a price recalculation. And not to mention, Rockstar need to use their shark card profits to fix their game. Why would you invest your real, hard-earned money into a broken game when modders drop you tons of money? When people around you are glitching or modding for themselves, earning ridiculous amounts of money for free, why would you spend a dime on such an unfair, poorly moderated and controlled system? The answer is that you just shouldn't. If shark cards were worth more, the modding community was practically empty, the game worked without any major money glitches, and they actually made more games each year, then buying a shark card wouldn't be as bad of an idea. But as of right now, it's a horrible idea. <laughs>